What's going on everybody? Hope you're doing fantastic out there. So we've got another awesome uh, light here for you from the folks at Brynite. Um, so again, just with the other one, so this was sent to me uh, from these guys, which I'm really excited about because I've, I've been needing a good dedicated headlamp for quite a while. So when they asked me if I wanted to check this out, I uh, definitely jumped at it. Um, so we're going to go through this thing. I've had it for a little while. I've used it for a little bit. Um, this is actually my second time recording this video um, because uh, I've got some things, some special stuff. So in this, um, there will be a discount code I will flash across the screen <clears throat> um, once we get into the pricing on this guy. And then also uh, there will be a special link and the discount code will be down below as well. Um, pick this thing up through Amazon. It is on Amazon Prime. So you can uh, get it within a, a couple of days depending on where you're at. But yeah, so let's jump into the packaging. So just typical with these guys, you just got a slip cover box. I have already taken the light out. Um, it was kind of a pain in the butt to get out of that little thing in there. But comes in with your typical paperwork and stuff from Brian Knight. The only one we're concerned about is the operations manual. Because in there it does go over some information. So we'll set this off to the side here. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the run times. So we'll get this kind of zoomed up here. So the one thing that we have discussed or that I have discussed with these guys is um, being a little more straightforward on their run times. Because it does not, um, just like most, most lights, it will not sit at 1,000 lumens for the entire 85 minutes. It does go down to a lower lumen setting um, now I was not able to get that information but just be aware it does dim down over time as with I think 90% of the lights out there um, but what makes this really interesting is it does have two auxiliary lights as well you do have a red and a white auxiliary light which are just super floodlights um, so if you don't need any spot whatsoever those floodlights work really well for that um, and then of course there you can see your high at 450, medium at 105, and then low. You do have strobe and SOS there as well. Um, run times are pretty good on this thing. I have found that with this one, the way it works, um, with the flood and spotlight that it has, um, I'm using medium, uh, the middle, you know, the middle of the 105 lumen, pretty much all the time. Um, the 105 is more than bright enough for what I need, especially working on a car or um, just, you know, honestly walking around at night. Um, with the headlamp on now if I need to quickly change it up to high then that does give you a much broader uh, a broader spectrum of light there but um, again it's just like I said most of the time staying in on the uh, the middle setting is is more than good enough for me um, going through one of the some kind of the cool features and we'll show it here in just a second so it does also have support for AAA batteries so if you do not um, so if you're, if you're not able to charge the light or if, you know, if you have, um, like me in my pack, I keep a, uh, you know, pretty healthy supply of AAA batteries uh, in my pack just as, you know, as an emergency stash of batteries. Um, this headlamp will work with those. And then you can kind of get an idea of the, um, the way everything works here as well. So if you want to you can pause as it goes now one thing is important is that the light does ship locked out so you can lock the light out as well which is again really nice for having it uh, stashed away in a pack um but here it is so this is the Brynight hc01 you can see your main light and then your two um auxiliary lights really nice case Really positive clicks on the adjustment, and it is adjustable 360 degrees. So you can switch it all the way around here. And then the uh, watertight battery compartment, you have a little latch here. You just flick the latch open, and then open up your case. And then your battery, you can pull your battery out. And this is where you can replace it with the um, three AAAs. And just super simple to do that. And then it clicks back down, and you latch it back. Um, it does have a patent pending um, a band system here. Um, now this system is getting slightly changed, um, with the next production run of these guys. Um, we'll talk about that as well, but this is a really ingenious system. I really like it. Um, you know, we'll, like I said, we'll go through everything here. I'm just going to zoom in really quickly just so we can take a look at some of those features. So here is your charge port again, rubber closure on that. 
And then you have your uh, two buttons here. So in order to lock, you press and hold these top two buttons and it's gonna flash. You wait until after it flashes and now it is locked out. You can see when you try to turn it on, it just gives you the battery indicator there. So then in, again, in order to unlock it, press and hold for two seconds. You have to hold it while it flashes. Once it stops flashes, you can let go. And now your light will turn on. So the um, the system uses a um, it's a it's a pretty non, it's a non tactile button. Um, so it is kind of hard to tell when it's being pressed, um, but that does help with the uh, the the water resistance of this light. Um, and then just your typical headband. Um, again, here is a little bit of that battery case. A little bit closer look here. So again, you got that little switch or the little clasp there and then inside your battery. And then like I said, it is kind of clips closed. So really interesting uh, headlamp. And like I said, the uh, the white and red light here is uh, is pretty intriguing as well. So taking a look here, we'll look at the auxiliary lights first. So you turn it on and it does have memory. So if you turn it on on high mode of the red light, it will stay on when the next time you click the auxiliary button, it will be on the high mode of red. So you hold and it will go from low to high, double click, and it will switch to the white. And there's the low and the high on the white. So you can see it is a straight flood. There is zero spot to that. And so I'll turn that off and then turn on here. Let me get down to low. So there's your low setting. And then you press and hold. It will ramp up to medium, high, and then turbo. Double click, it'll go down to low. Double click, it'll go up to turbo. And then when you turn it on, it will be on high. And you can just press and hold to go to low. So again, it does have a memory. So there it's on medium. You turn it off, turn it back on, it's on medium. So I really like having a memory function on these guys. Um, strobe warning, I am going to try to get the strobe to work here. So I believe it is three clicks. Yep, so there's your strobe and then three more clicks. There's your SOS. And then you can go back to your normal mode. So I'm going to put this back on low, turn that off. Um, <clears throat> so going into the uh, adjustment system here, so it's simple. You can just, you kind of can hold it here or you can hold it on to the side. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the instructions tell you to hold it on the top and the bottom and then you just pull it out and you can feel it's got kind of like a, um, like, like a friction clutch system in there to where it's just kind of just the friction of the band is keeping that in there. Um, now pulling on this just straight by itself will allow it to adjust out. It's a little bit more difficult to get it to do that way. And they are making some adjustments to make this a little, a little harder to pull out. Um, and then they are also looking at adding, um, a, a sort of a padding or something here to keep it from um, moving around as much on your head. So that's one thing I have noticed with the light in its current setup is that, um, you know, when you're wearing it for a short amount of time, it doesn't really matter. Um, it will move side to side pretty easily, but it doesn't fall or anything like that. But once you start getting sweaty or anything like that, um, it can start to slip a little bit on, uh, on your forehead, but you can easily adjust that um, just to make this a little bit tighter. So one thing I found is when wanting this to be tighter on your head, you put the, the back of the headband on first and then slide the front on. This will keep it from adjusting, from self-adjusting because it's actually made to self-adjust as you put it on and, um, to kind of get it to where it's that, that, you know, quote unquote, perfect tight, um, perfect level of tight. So um, if you want it to be a little tighter, putting it on at the back first will allow you to do that. You'll get a little more stretch in the band. Um, but then outside of that, once you are done with it um, and you want to store it, you just simply twist and this will allow you to twist up and put this into storage mode, which I think this is really awesome. Um, keeps the band from getting tangled up on anything. It just, it's a really ingenious design. I really like this. Um, and again, it's a very useful light. So I'm going to throw in some stuff here in just a moment uh, for the night shots. Those are going to come in right now. All right, guys. So we're out here in the backyard again. 
Um, so right now we are using my phone's flash. So you can kind of get an idea. You can see here on the ground. Um, but past about, to the naked eye, past about 10 feet, I can't see a damn thing. There's a burn barrel there. I can kind of see bits or pieces of it with the naked eye. And same thing, I can kind of make out, you know, some trees. There's the edge of my old truck. Um, kind of make out some stuff, but not a whole lot. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the light on. And turn off the flash. So this is um, the 10 lumen low. So here next to the truck. And yes, this thing is just absolutely filthy. But it's a, a long ongoing project. project. This is my dad's truck. So... Um, but you can kind of see, kind of see the tree there. Um, tree's probably, I don't know, 10 yards away. And you can make out the burn barrel there a little bit. Um, I can see it very clearly with the naked eye. But a little bit, uh, a little bit difficult to see there on camera. So we'll go ahead and go up to medium. So medium, you can see a lot more. Now it is kind of foggy out tonight, which makes it extra creepy back here. No, I'm just kidding. But with medium, you can really see your the burn barrel there now. Um, everything, you can make out everything there. Um, you can see, sorry, it's really weird doing this with my head and having the camera in hand. So you can see that old playground set back there, tree. Um, you can almost make out the wood line uh, all the way down. So again, the wood line's probably 50 to uh, 50 to 75 yards away. Man, it got cold out here. Um, there you can see that building there. The building's actually probably about 50 yards. Um, and then the, uh, like I said, the wood line's probably another, you know, 75 yards, maybe 100 yards at certain spots, but. Let's go ahead and go to high. So that's high there. So that should be 450 lumens. So now you can see the woods pretty well. Um, everything is very visible. This thing has a pretty good spot and then a pretty solid, um, pretty solid flood too. So it's pretty nice all around light. Um, go ahead and go into turbo. So turbo mode just really increases your spot intensity. And uh, so there you can see that spot. It really increases that spot intensity. And then just really gives you a, a pretty good amount of flood as well. Um, so a very impressive light in general. I really like how far this thing is. So I mean, pointing straight ahead. I mean, you can see it's flooding from the side of the truck there all the way around i mean it's almost 180 degrees flood so i mean here's my building so i mean it floods a very large section i mean and it floods all the way over i mean like all the way to the front of the truck so like i said i can almost see in 180 degrees um with this headlight on so very impressive indeed um we're gonna go back down to medium there so like i said extremely impressive and then it has the Let's see, I'm going to try to bring it up here. Hopefully you guys can see this. So it has adjustment to where you can adjust it down further and have it pointed directly at the ground as you're walking. Um, then, like I said, you can have it adjusted anywhere in between. Um, it just works really well. Um, and with the flood that it has being adjusted straight forward, so here I have it at eye level, and then I can almost get... To see my feet um, with just the flood that it has um, when I'm just looking straight ahead so no issues there and if I pull it down one click now I can I mean it's I can literally see exactly what's in front of me I can see ahead plenty plenty but I like it kind of more in this section here where it's uh, pointed more straight ahead um, gives you a little better idea of where you're heading but all right well let's go ahead and go inside and finish the uh finish the unboxing all right guys so i am an idiot and i forgot to look at the auxiliary lights while we were 
out back. So I'm back around in the front right now and I'm no longer using this as a headlamp. I'm just holding it like a flashlight. But there is your high on your auxiliary. So about five yards away, that's the front of my son's truck. Um, but you can see it doesn't provide a ton of light, but it is all flood. There is no spot. So this is a flood light. Um, and then with low, there you can kind of get an idea. So I'm about, I don't know, five foot off the ground maybe. So those pavers are on the ground level and I'm just up on my deck. Uh, like I said, I'm maybe five foot up in the air, um, or maybe five foot away from those pavers, I should say. Um, to the naked eye, it's you know, it's passable. It's about like the uh, about like the flashlight on your phone. Again, all flood, no um, no spot, and then your red light. So the red light is, seems a little bit brighter. Um, you can kind of see some reflection there. Um, and then on high, again, it's pretty much the same brightness. You can make out the front of the truck. To the naked eye, I can see it just fine. Um, and then, like I said, you can see those pavers and stuff down there. So, um, again, this would be interesting to use for, um, for walking around in the woods at night or anything like that. If you're trying to preserve your night vision, this would help for that. But, uh, not super bright lights and they're not meant to be. All right, guys, well, let's uh, let's head on back inside. All right, and so, again, um, these guys are like 50 bucks. I want to say they're $49.99 or $59.99. I can't remember exactly, um, but I am going to have the link down below. I'm also going to flash the code here across the screen, and then also the code will be down below as well in the description. Uh, so thanks to the fine folks with Brynite um, for hooking y'all up with an awesome 20% off code. Um, now, I do not know how long the code is active for. So if it's something you're able to jump on, go ahead and do so now um, while these lights are still available. Um, and then, uh, like I said, you know, we're, uh, they're hoping to do a second batch. I'm not sure exactly when, but they are hoping to do a second batch with a few adjustments, a few advancements. Um, and they are taking into account, like I said, the, um, where I talked to them about doing a, a more accurate breakdown on their, um, their output and everything. So hopefully they'll take that. Uh, these guys have been really accepting of, any sort of uh, criticisms, which I haven't had a whole lot of criticisms, but any advice that I've given them, they have been really accepting on. Um, the last light that I reviewed from these guys was kind of an upgrade from the original, uh, which was one of the first lights that they sent me. And they really took in um, a lot of that input and they were receiving pretty much the same input from everyone. So they're taking that input and they're really running with it. So kudos to them for doing that. Um, again, so really interesting light. I really enjoy it. Uh, like I said, it's came in handy quite a lot here, excuse me, here recently. And, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about this one. So, uh, I, I will probably make some adjustments to this one myself by adding just a, a small piece of foam here on the front side, uh, probably top and bottom just to, uh, just to make it a little more comfortable for myself. Uh, but other than that, like I said, for, for the price and for what you're getting a great headlamp, really can't complain about it at all. So anyway, folks, I really appreciate you guys. As always, thanks for watching, subscribing, commenting, and then just remember to be kind, be humble, be EDC. Y'all take care.